Let's, everybody, let's stand up. We got to refocus. Let's, everybody, get up to your feet. Stand up one more time, one more time. Let's go, everybody, everyone to your feet, to your feet, to your feet. Let's all get loud and obnoxious for the coolest youth pastor in America, Pastor Seth Trenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. You're pretty. And those suspenders. Those are, those are pretty, pretty suspenders. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. How are you doing tonight? How many of you guys love Jesus? I'm just going to preach like this all night long in my weird honky voice. Um, how many of you guys brought your Bibles to church? Let me see them. I want to see them because I know teenagers lie. I'm just joking. Not, not really, but let me see them. Put them there. Wave them around. Y'all have uh, smartphones with Bibles on them. If not, you have a paper Bible. If not, you don't have one. Maybe we'll uh, throw some scriptures on the, on the screen if they can keep up with me. But um, how many of you guys were here last week? For the water water fight, that was fun, huh? That was good stuff. We could have had a water fight tonight and not even had to buy water balloons. We could have just went and ran around the field and be like, water fight! And we all would have lost. Yeah, we could have done like rain punching. You ever do that? Yeah, where you like test your ninja skills when it's raining and you have to focus on one raindrop and connect punches to the face of to the face of the raindrops. Rain wrestling. See, that's weird. Wrestling rain, but punching rain. That's totally normal. Um, we are in a, in a series. I think we've got one more week after this. Um, you guys remember, do you guys remember what we're even talking about? What? Brainstorm. Brainstorm brainstorm the the we're talking about the storm that goes on inside our brain what do you got there dude i love reese's pieces no mm. dealing with and managing destroying overcoming the storm that goes on inside of our inside of our mind inside of our hearts inside of our our spirits you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, dog? So, it's been a couple weeks since we've been here, so I want to just go back just real quick. Is that cool? 7.48. Um, the first point, let's go all the way back. What do we do when we experience these storms? These, these, these seasons of confusion, these seasons of doubt, these seasons of frustration, those times where you just want to like slam your head through a wall because you just don't know, because you have so many voices inside your head telling you to do what's right, telling you to do what's wrong, telling you to do you don't know what's right, you don't know what's wrong. Um, the, first, the first point we talked about is do not fear the storm. All right, we talked about Jesus in the boat. They were in the middle of the water. There was a storm and he was what? He was sleeping passed out he took his melatonin and he was out he was out the disciples everybody in the boat were freaking out they were going to die they came screaming at him why are you sleeping he gets up yells at them yells at the storm the storm ceases it stops and the people were amazed and jesus was able to work in his authority because he was not afraid of the storm and i think so many times in our life we get in those situations where we don't know what's going on and we want an answer now and we need to know now, and, and we start freaking out, and we fear it, and we lose all, all, we just lose it, because we start, we walk in fear. When we're in fear, there's no power of, of a sound mind, right? And then the, the, the next, uh, the second point, um, we played, the, we played the, uh, the clip of the movie 
Twister. Remember when they ran into the storm shelter and the, 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 the big Twister comes up? Yeah, they almost, the dog almost died and you guys cared more about the dog dying than the people because you're sick. No. We love dogs. But we had to talk about um, how we have to take refuge in his word, right? In his word is where our aid is. That's where our fortress is. That's where we are delivered is inside his word. Well, what's his word? Open your Bible. Open your Bible. Every single circumstance that you have to deal with. I don't care if it's love, relationships, um, addiction, marriage, singleness, um, decision making, anything that you're facing. If you open up the word of God, there's shelter, there's provision there's a fortress there that can, that can calm your storm called truth where you can stand on and say, it doesn't matter what my, my friends are saying or what my, my crazy aunt's telling me or what my boyfriend or girlfriend, my friends are thinking, uh, this, is the, this is my shelter, this is my fortress, this is my protection when we're in these seasons where we're going crazy and we have to make decisions or whatever the circumstance is, find shelter. You don't run out into the field chasing the tornado. You go underground and you lock that hatch and you wait for the storm to pass so that you survive. Right? You don't want to wake up in Oz with flying monkeys and witches. No one, no one, wow. I'm old. 35 years old, man. Oh. I'm almost dead. <laughs> Zoe, Elliot, it was nice being your father. I love you. That's my joke. I'm not really almost dead. I'm going to live to be 100. <clears throat> 100. I just figured, you know what? Why not? How many people live to 100? Not very many. I just want to say, hey, I live to be 100. I remember when we had to drive our cars. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> now number three. <clears throat> Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. Wait, wrong button. Screen on. There it is, the glory. Number three, you have a storm going on. What do you do, right? We talked a little bit about um, how storms in our life are, it's just a part of life. We have storms, right? Today we had a storm in the natural. In our lives, there's gonna be seasons where it's just stormy. It's gray, it's, it's sad, it, it, it's it depressing maybe. There's, there's, there's days where it's going to be full of sunshine and happiness and butterflies, rainbows, unicorns, midgets, riding unicorns with the butterflies over the rainbow. Yeah. Unicorns with Subaru exhaust. Because <laughs> that's the best sound out, that's the best sound out there. <clears throat> so... It's not how do we stop the storm because the storms come. It's how do we deal with the storms? How do we overcome the storms? Okay, that's what we're talking about. And when the storms come in life, you, need, you can battle the storm. Everybody say battle the storm. You can battle a spiritual storm. Are you taking a picture? You need to insta, insta that. Um, you need to battle the storm in prayer. Number three is you battle in prayer. Battle in prayer. Write it down. Jackson, write this, write this crap down. That's good stuff, man. Write it down. Battle in prayer. You ready to write that down? Type it away. Just call them out. Now, um, prayer is an interesting thing because um, usually when we talk about prayer, people like get all clammy. They're like, You say prayer, hey, hey, Anthony, will you come up here and pray for us? Really? That was a 
a bad example. Thanks for ruining my example, Anthony. He's like, yeah, totally. I don't know. Maybe Anthony's a better, better man than I was be, because when I was his age, you say prayer. I'm just like, I, I'm yes. I don't talk. I don't. I don't pray. What? Sorry. I love deaf people. I was just making a point. Like I, I like I personally like when I was when I was a junior high, even in high school, I was like, hey, you want to pray? No. But they're gonna die. I don't care. I I don't I don't pray. Like my hands are getting sweaty and I don't know what to do. Because in our culture, when we think of prayer, well, why don't we just, let's play the video clip. Let's turn this light. Let's turn off the lights. Let's play the clip. Let's make sure that sound's on. Let's turn off those lights and let's play that clip. There you go. Let's turn off those lights and play that clip. Dear Lord, baby Jesus, or as our brothers to the south call you, hey Zeus, Let's turn we it up. thank you so much for this bountiful harvest of Domino's, KFC, and the always delicious Taco Bell. I just want to take time to say thank you for my family, my two beautiful, beautiful, handsome, striking sons, Walker and Texas Ranger, or TR as we call them. And, of course, my red-hot smoking wife, Carly, who's a stone-cold fox. I mm. also want to thank you for my best friend and teammate, Cal Naughton Jr., who's got my back no matter what. Shake and bake. Dear Lord Baby Jesus, we also thank you for my wife's father, Chip. We hope that you can use your Baby Jesus powers to heal him and his horrible leg. And it smells terrible, and the dogs are always mm. bothering with it. Mm. Dear tiny infant Jesus. Hey, we... um, you know, sweetie... Jesus did grow up. You don't always have to call him baby. It's a bit odd and off-putting to pray to a baby. Well, look, I like the Christmas Jesus best, and I'm saying grace. When you say grace, you can say it to grown-up Jesus or teenage Jesus or bearded Jesus or whoever you want. You know what I want? I want you to do this grace good so that God will let us win tomorrow. <sighs> Dear tiny Jesus, your golden fleece diapers with your tiny little fat balled-up fist pawing. He was a man. He had a beard. Look, I like the baby version the best. Do you hear me? I win the races and I get the money. I like to picture Jesus in a tuxedo t-shirt because it says, like, I want to be formal, right. but I'm here to party, too. Because I like to party, so I like my Jesus to party. I like to picture Jesus as a ninja fighting off evil samurai. I like to think of Jesus, like, with giant eagle's wings yeah. and singing lead vocals for Leonard Skinner with, like, an angel band. Hey, Cal, why don't you just shut up? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Dear eight pound, six ounce, newborn infant Jesus. Don't even know a word yet. Just little infant, so cuddly, mm. but still omnipotent. Mm. We just thank you for all the races I've won and the twenty one point two million dollars. Woo! 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 Ow! Love that money that I have accrued over this past season. Also due to a binding endorsement contract that stipulates I mentioned Powerade at each grace. I just want to say the Powerade is delicious, mm. and it, it cools you off on a hot summer day. And we look forward to Powerade's release of Mystic Mountain Blueberry. Mm. Thank you for all your power and your grace, dear baby God. Amen. Amen. That is the best prayer of any movie right there. That is not the kind of prayer that... I'm talking about tonight. <laughs> Dear tiny Jesus. Eight pounds, six ounce. Don't even know a word yet. Cuddly, but yet still. Yeah. Omnipotent. Funny stuff. Like we talked a couple weeks ago, guys. Let's pray. Lord, forgive me. Baby Jesus, I just pray. Um, God, we just thank you for tonight. Father, I just pray that uh, you use 
me tonight somehow to get this point across how we battle our 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 storms with prayer father i just pray that our ears would be open to hear your word with understanding god with revelation god i pray that we'd get something out of this that would change our perspective in jesus name if you want that we say amen or holla holla thunderstorms listen guys thunderstorms form when an air mass becomes unstable right we talked about this week one when the when they the thunderstorms form when an air mass becomes so unstable that it overturns violently right the lower air is is hot and the upper air is cold or vice versa and they hit each other and it just causes the atmosphere to toil to turn to spin to get violent um, out of control which creates a storm right the only time that a storm can exist is when the atmosphere allows it to exist Do you get that? The only time that a, a storm can exist is when the atmosphere allows the storm to exist. Does this make sense? Okay. When the, when the atmosphere has a, a negative and positive ions, when it has the hot and cold, it becomes unstable, which allows the environment to be ready for a storm. It's saying, okay, we're now... We're, we're confused here. We've got the, the negative and the positive. We've got the hot and the cold. We are, they, it has created an atmosphere where a storm can be birthed and exist and cause havoc, right? Now, if the atmosphere is always hot, it's always positive, it's a stable environment, okay? There's not going to be a storm happening when it's just hot all the time, right? The last couple of weeks have been amazing. Why? Because it's been hot. The atmosphere has been warm, okay? The last couple of days, the cold front comes in. All of a sudden, we got rain. We've got all this, the wind and all this nastiness, right? The atmosphere can be completely cold. It can be completely negative. Your life atmosphere can be completely nable, uh, negative and still be stable, You can live a completely negative life and be stable, normal. You think that you're, you're the wrong thinking. You think the negativity is correct and it's no, no problem. But when truth comes in, it's going to cause the atmosphere up here and in here to start to turn and wrestle with each other storm okay now i'm confused because i've always been taught that god isn't real but then i came to church with my friend and 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 I, there's something that i'm feeling here and I, I this is making sense and i or i went to camp and I, and and i got and, or i got healed or what, whatever and it starts truth and lies in our minds in our lives start overturning each other but the only time that a storm can exist is when your atmosphere will allow it to exist. So how does prayer have anything to do with this? See, guys, prayer is... Um, is not like what we just saw on the screen, okay? The Bible says that Jesus, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Luke chapter 5, it talks about how Jesus would, if you read your Bible, hopefully you guys read your Bible, you will see that a lot of times Jesus will get away from the disciples and he'll go up on a mountain or he'll go into a quiet place and he'll pray, he'll seek God. And, and then when he goes out into the world and he's out ministering to people and he's teaching, he doesn't go and he doesn't, he doesn't pray for the sick. He speaks to the sick. Why is it when we go to, to pray for, go out and we find a sick person, we feel like we need to just pray for them? Probably because we haven't spent the time back here praying. Really 
Because as I was staring, as I was like really studying on this and, and meditating on this this point of battling our storms with prayer, and I'm trying to like I'm, I'm a reading, and I'm like, okay, where did where did Jesus, you know, and, and he's praying for that person. And it's like, wait a minute, he's not praying for people. He's speaking to people. He's casting the the devil out of people. He's He's forgiving them of their, their sins, and then they're getting healed. He's, he's telling them to do something, and they're, they're walking out by faith, and they're getting healed. But he doesn't just, oh, Lord, Father, I just pray for this paralyzed man. I just, I just speak life to his body in my name, in my baby version name. Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed where he got away, where he, got, he disconnected his, his, he turned his iPod off. He shut his laptop. He turned the music off. He'd go away and he would pray. He would, he would seek God. He would, he would talk to God. His Father, our Father, right? This was a habit that Jesus, or this was a habit um, of going away was a habit for Jesus. And it, and it needs to be a habit in our life as well. This is not something that we get to do one time. This is something that we need to do on a consistent basis. This isn't like, oh, Sunday I went and I, I prayed for 15 minutes. I'm good. No, it's probably something, especially when we're younger, we need to be doing on a several times a day if we want to be real about it. At least once a day where we get away in the morning before our, our craziness starts and we just, we just go and we meet with Jesus alone. No texting, no Facebook, no, no Instagram, no Twitter. Where our attention is on him and we're allowing his attention to be on us. This is something that we need to do every day of our life for the rest of our life. To be a success as a Christian. What do I mean by that? By being a Christian who, who lasts a life, your lifetime. Not someone who fizzles out when you're 50 years old and you give up or you go soft on your doctrine and now you're all grace you know what I'm saying this is something that as Christians we need to do because it's a it is a Christianity is a relationship with Jesus a relationship with God through Jesus it's not a re, it's not a religion it's not a title it's not a uh, a denomination. It's not a, a, a special hat that you get to wear because you go to a building with a cross on the front of it. No, Christianity is Christ-like. It is a relationship, right? If, if, if I want to be, um, if I just hung out all the time with Jordan, we're going to be like each other, right? That's why when you guys look at your best friend, you're probably a lot like your best friend. It's not because you're, it's because you hang out to get with each other all the time and you 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 wear off on each other it's the same thing with our relationship with God in our time of prayer Jesus had his times where he withdrew and he prayed and when he was out he he was able to just move we'll get more into that I think at the end if we want to get God's vision for our life and to hear God's voice you need to meet with him daily daily everybody say daily daily because I know you because I I'm a parent of two of you and I can leave in the morning first thing in the morning be like okay hey, kids this is what our day's looking like this is what we need to have happen we need to make sure our rooms clean give the orders for the day must make sure we keep up the house whatever come home from work beds not made bedroom's a mess, laundry didn't get touched, dishes are like five times more than there were when I left. And I'm like, okay, we met and it still didn't stick. <laughs> so what happens to our life when we don't even meet with God, who we're, who we're going to live our life or who we're going to, who we're going to serve the, the rest of our days, right? It is important. See, prayer is not a dinner time ritual. See, someone needs to go and, and, and tell Ricky Bobby, 
Ricky Bobby, Jesus isn't a baby. And, 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 and prayer is not a, a dinner time ritual, right? That is, that is uh, a giving thanks for his provision. See, we got it all messed up. Who's going to pray for the dinner? It's like, why are we praying for our food? Right? It's a time where we give thanks. God, thank you for this, for providing for us. I thank you that all of our needs are met according to your riches and, and glory. God, I just bless the hands that prepare this. Right? But we turn our prayer into praying for a f- our food that maybe we need to pray for our food because most of it's killing us, right? Prayer is, um, prayer, fasting, meditation are all things that, that crucify, crucify our flesh. Crucify. Right? It makes God, when we pray, when we fast, when we meditate, it, 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 it's telling our bodies, hey, I know that you're hungry, but I'm more powerful than my hunger. It's telling the man to get down. It's allowing God to get bigger in our lives, right? Prayer is just, is talking to God. It's getting to know him as intimate as he knows you. You know that God knows you intimately? The Bible says he knows the the number of hairs that are on your head. In Jeremiah, it says before you, you were even conceived, before you were even formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. That word knew meant that before time, you and God conversed, you, you asked questions, you related to, you hung out. And before you were even created in your mother's womb, you were, you were ordained, you were sanctified, that you were set apart for something, for such a time. Our prayer allows us to get to know this amazing God at an intimate level like he knows you. And we can go weeks, we can go months, we can go sometimes years without spending time with God to, to get to know the guy, the man, the, the God who, who we are trusting with our eternal salvation, who we're saying, you know what? I've got your back. I'm going to give you my life. I don't know you. And I don't even care to get to know you. But I'm going to, I'm going to be a Christian. So that I, when I die, I don't go to hell. Because hell sounds hot and stinky. Mean. And hot forever this makes sense doesn't that make doesn't that sound crazy it's like before we marry somebody for what 60 years of your life you're like i need to know them i thought i knew you i did not know that you farted right When you get married, that's like the pursuit is I get to know them. They get to know me. We're intimate. We communicate. We hang out. And then we're going to go into a covenant. And we're going to be married and live happily ever after forever. And then three years later, I thought I knew you. You changed. And we're like, God, here's my life. I'm going to give you everything that I have. And we don't spend any time in prayer to get to know God. Prayer is, prayer is speaking and renewing our minds to a place that lines up to what God thinks and speaks about us. When we pray, it is aligning ourselves. It's speaking. It's meditating. It's thinking. It's 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 a thinking about what God is saying about us, what he thinks, and then eventually our minds and and our spirits are going to be aligned with what God thinks and what he says about us. So when the storms come and the confusion comes, or the stupid person in your life goes, you're stupid. You're not like, I am? You're like, whatever. My God could squash you, and he thinks I'm really, really rad. And it's not even a storm. Why? Because you spent time in prayer. 
You spent time getting to know God. If I, if I spent time with, 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 um, with Jordan and over time, I would get to know what he thinks about me. The more we hang out, the more he would know me. It would make our relationship stronger and stronger. Prayer builds you up. It empowers you. Prayer makes you stronger. That is why I believe Jesus. It's not because he was just Jesus. It's because he spent time in prayer. He, he went away. He got away from his friends and he spent time with Jesus and he, he built himself up. He was empowered. He was strengthened. So that way, when he, he got the understanding of who God said he was. He had an, he, his identity was 100%. So that way when he walked out and there was sick people and there was people that needed forgiveness and, and deliverance, he didn't have to go, oh Lord, we just pray, we lift you up, we thank you God, you're a good God. We just thank you that you're, he just said, be healed. He took a messed up situation that was full of a storm, he spoke a positive. If you want to look at it like that way, it set the atmosphere to where the storm had to cease. Just like he did on the boat, he did it in the physical. Prayer is not a hocus pocus. It's not an abracadabra. It's not a, a magic. Prayer, we need to look at prayer like, like food, how food keeps us alive. Food, prayer is a, an, an essential need. It, f- prayer is something that we, we have to have as Christians right? It is what gives us, uh, food is what gives us the power and the energy to make it through the day, right? Any of you guys ever fasted where you just like, you know, whether it's for medical reasons or spiritual reasons, you're like, you know, I'm going to fast. God bless me. I'm going to fast. I'm going to be spiritual. I'm going to see the glory. I'm going to see God's butt like Moses. And it sucks. You're cranky. You're hungry. You want to punch the kittens? <laughs> oh, yeah, meow, meow. I'm going to punch you. I'm going to eat you. I'm going to eat you, cat. Right? Your holiness turned into like a demon. <laughs> but it gives you power over the storm. It gives you power to, to change the atmosphere. Wow. Matthew chapter 17. I'm just going to read it really quick. Chapter 17, we're going to start at 14. It says, and when they'd come, um, so this is, this is right after they got off the boat. Yes, this is right after they got off the boat that he like, who was sleeping, it was storming, he's, they're freaking out. And he's like, hey, when stop, stop. What the? what? They get off the boat, right? They were just going from one side of the lake to the other side. They get off the boat, and when they had come to the, to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down. Is this right? Or am I got my, maybe I didn't use that verse. Anyways, this is a good one. A man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an um, epilepsy Leptic and epileptic and suffers severely, right? Y'all know what that is? Like when people have like seizures, brain goes crazy, right? There's a storm, like a neurological storm that goes on in their brain medically that makes them just tweak, right? And he's suffering violently, severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. Not like, hey, sometimes he like, he'll just be like walking and like he'll fall in the fire or sometimes he'll, often, usually he will like fall into the fire. Often he'll, he'll fall into the water. Oh God, my day sucks so bad. I like stubbed my toe and I like spilled my coffee on me. Often he falls into fire. This 
is his son. I can't imagine if I had one of my sons often <laughs> threw themselves into the fire. Be like, son, don't do that. Hot, hot fire, hot. <laughs> right? Often falls into the water. Like, you don't swim when you're having a seizure. You're drowning. You're sinking. Right? And you stay there long enough, you'll be bobbing. It's not good to be often falling into fire, which means this boy is probably burnt, no hair, melted skin. And this, this dad is coming to Jesus saying, help me, right? So he says, so I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Why? Because they were probably going, oh Lord God, <laughs> we know you're a good God, right? Because they were out telling jokes on the boat while Jesus was probably praying. I don't know. And then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? Basically, you guys suck. How long should I bear with you? Lord, take me now. Give me the cross. These people are killing me here. Nail me now. Play saying. In verse 18, it says, And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Hey, 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 Shh, Jesus, come here. Why couldn't we cast that devil out? I like rubbed his head. I said, God, you're a good God. I said, out. Hocus pocus. Why can we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. For surely I say to you, why do they have unbelief? Because they didn't spend time so they didn't know the authority that they really carried, like Jesus did. Because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. See, Jesus understood this crazy statement. If you have a faith the size of a seed this big, and you say to a mountain or a situation or a demon to move, it has to move. He had that revelation because... That's what the authority that God has given him. And he spent time with him in prayer. He understood it because he spent time with God. He says, however, this kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. See, this boy has a storm going on. It wants to burn him. It wants to drown him. This storm is out to destroy this boy, right? This boy has a storm. There's so many people in our lives that have storms, whether it's addiction or it's a disease or it's a mental illness. Come on, we can say whatever we want to say, but right here, uh, this, this, this kid with seizures, he cast a demon out of him. And we want to just, oh, just give him some medicine. Smoke some pot. It'll make you all better. You'll see crazy things. Mm, we cast some devils out. The storm is out to destroy him. Guys, just like his storm, our storms are negative. They're negative and they're demonically influenced. Come on, a lot of the times in my mind when I'm dealing with a storm, it's, it is straight up demonic. And I'm a pastor. The negative thoughts aren't coming from God. Right? And I know they aren't, he's not doing that to you. You know, thank God that Jesus prayed. Thank God that Jesus prayed because he was stronger than that boy's storm. He knew that he had the, the authority to walk into that boy's life and just tell it to go away. Thank God that Jesus prayed. Wouldn't it be cool if you prayed? <laughs> 
what if what if we just set I'm gonna be I'm gonna spend an hour on Facebook let's spend an hour with Jesus or just spend an hour with your face in his book oh Come on, when you're a person of prayer, you, be, you too become stronger than your storms. Come on, when you become a person of prayer, you become stronger than your storms. When you become a person of, of prayer, you become stronger than your storms, where you be able to be able to stick up and you just stand out and you walk out to the storm and you stick your head out from your shelter and you go, you know what, storm? truth you speak the positive you change the atmosphere you make your atmosphere all positive get rid of the negative when you prayer changes your atmosphere that's the whole point prayer will change your atmosphere it will it will make it a, a fully positive atmosphere where a storm cannot even exist right You have the ability to speak to the atmosphere of your head or your heart, whatever, what's going on. But here's the thing, guys. Um, you are not the one waiting on God. Oh, you just got to go wait on God. I'm just going to go wait on God. I'm just going to go on my prayer call. I'm going to wait on God. We don't have to wait on God. God is usually waiting on us. We're too busy waiting on God while we're thinking about all the other stuff that we're not really meditating and focusing on what we're there to focus on. Because we're meditating, we're waiting on God. While we're waiting on God, all we're thinking about is Facebook. Who's posting? Who's doing what? What is my girlfriend doing? What are they doing? What? Oh, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, Transformers. I love Transformers. Squirrel. Correct? Because that's what my mind does most of the time. I've got to like, no. Make it. God is waiting on you. God wants to meet with you. He wants you to know him as well as he knows you. He has nothing to hide from you. Isn't that awesome? Come on, if we don't understand this, you are rarely, you, you are probably rarely going, um, you're probably rarely going to God for, for guidance if we don't understand that. There's nothing in your life that he is not interested in. He is interested in your wins and he is interested in your failures. He's interested in your strengths and in your weaknesses. Come on. He's interested in the big things and he's interested in the small things. Matthew 6, 31 and 32, come on, where it talks about don't worry about what you'll eat, don't worry about what you're going to drink, don't worry about what you're going to wear, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So we need to stop feeling so unworthy. We got to stop feeling not good enough. Um, not wanting, oh, I just don't want to bug the big guy in this big, the big guy in the sky. My little itty bitty problems. No, he cares about your itty bitty problems because they're keeping you awake up at night. They're, they're, they're keeping anxiety in your life. He cares about those little things. I don't know. I just don't feel like, I just haven't really prayed in a long time I just I'm just I just keep messing up and I just shut up shut up right that's I think God would actually say that to us I have to say it to my daughter sometimes they're like no you're not listening hey shut up shh shh not just LA all my all my kids right? My son is the worst. My gosh. It's like, shut up. Shut. I have to say like seven times and then I'm, I'm going to punch you in the face. Shh. No. Ah! I, I warned you. See, the Lord will always warn you. <laughs> Shugging, right? I'm not, I'm not good enough. I don't want to bug him. Be, be a young person who loves to pray. What the heck? Be a young person who loves to pray. 
What happens if you become a young person who has the ability and the strength to speak to your storm? What the heck? You're, you'll probably be bold enough to be able to speak into your friend's storms. Eight thirty. Jeez. Prayer, guys, is so important. Do you guys get this? Hopefully, I didn't just bore the heck out of you guys. Prayer is so important, and and uh, you guys, we just really need to make sure that we we've all been real with ourselves and said the most important prayer. And that is the prayer of salvation. That's where we, that is the prayer. That is what gets us right with God. That's what gets us to heaven. That's what lays our life down and, 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 and allows God to start using us. And I'm going to close, but I just want to encourage you guys that if you're here tonight and you haven't ever prayed that salvation prayer to God, and you don't know that if, your days were to end tonight if you would spend eternity in heaven or hell. Come on, I hope that you're brave enough, that you're bold enough to come and come and talk to me after service. Cool? Because we need to make sure that you say that prayer before, or these other prayers won't make any, any difference. Father, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you that you are good. Father, I thank you that you are real, that you are alive, and that you want and desire a relationship with me, with us. God, I just pray that this word would not um, not fall on deaf ears, God, that this would just uh, be something that takes root in our life, that there'd be fruit. God, that we would be a generation who seeks you, who loves to pray so that we get to know you in Jesus' name. Amen? Peace. If you're going to camp, go see Rachel in the back. She's got your camp info.